Hey, what's up? And I'm John Humphrey from Seether and the Nixons. And you're watching. Good. Let's do it again. Company. Good company. <laughs> hey, I'm Johnny from Seether. And you're watching. Good, Good company. company. Hey, I'm Johnny from Seether and the Nixons. And you're watching. Good, Good company. company. <laughs> hey guys, my name is Scott Bowling, and look, John Humphrey, Seether. Thank you for being here, man. Thanks, man. Dude, Thanks for this is awesome. Me. And look at this. You guys are number yes. one as a number for three weeks. That's insane. It's awesome. Number one, new album. How do you say the new album? Seawees Pacem Parabellum. That was good. If yeah. you want peace, prepare for war. It's Latin. That, that's deep, man. That's cool. It's deep. Uh, this is awesome. You guys are number one, though. How'd you find out? Like, how do you find out? Did somebody actually, call from you? a friend. Yeah, actually, a friend had posted it. Yeah. I mean, I guess oh, you find really? out everything on social media. So you just check in social media and you're checking like, social media. And my friend was like, one. congrats to my buddy, man. And I'm like, oh, Without wow. Right <laughs> Three weeks. You Three know? weeks in a row. Because yeah, the last I heard, it was like in the top 10. Uh -huh. And then the next thing I hear, it's it's number one. Have, have you guys been number one in previously? We have, yeah. Okay. yeah. But you guys like tour a lot and, and you have to work at it. This is like staying home because of COVID. Yeah, this and, one's a weird one. It's really different because mm -hmm. anytime we're a touring band, everyone knows who knows Seether, we're gone 120 plus states a year. So we're always touring. Do you like touring? Like, how's that? I love it. Do I you? do. I love it. I have two boys. I have a family, a mm. wife at home, and it's tough being away, but it's what I do. I live out of a suitcase, man, and I have for, for many years. Yeah, man. It must be crazy not living out of a suitcase now. I mean, staying at home. <laughs> it's weird. I left it uh, unpacked for a long time. Oh, yeah? And uh, finally just, like, put it away. But it's, it's, it's really weird. So your album that's out now, uh, Corey sent me a copy and signed it. Nice. How awesome is that? Thanks, Corey. Do Good Scott. old Corey, man. Yeah. He's awesome. Corey Lowry's awesome, man. And I want to talk about him, though. Uh, did you guys record that, record this before COVID? We did. We finished it right at the end of January. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah man, that's awesome yeah. timing. So it was perfect, man. We yeah. had just finished it. We were so excited. We we're so pumped. Gonna hit the road. It's, Gonna it's hit the gone. road. We we're talking about dates in summer and mm -hmm. headline tour. The tour was booked, ready to go. Yeah. Bags were literally packed and then you know, by the end of February, everything had changed. That's insane. Um, let's talk about Corey Lowry, man. You had Clint Lowry. Yeah. I love this. So Clint filled in. He's in the video. He he was on the show and then was going to be in the video like the next day or something. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah, for, yeah. I can't remember the name of the song he was on. But but anyway, how did you get Corey Lowry on the show? On the show, on the in the band? So he, he filled in for Clint, essentially is what happened. We went to Europe and Seven Dust was on a hiatus and Clint had filled in for a little while. Mm. Then we were headed overseas to tour with Nickelback and do, do some headlining stuff. Yeah. And Corey was just going to fill in. He's like, how about my brother? And we only knew Corey as a bass player, you know? Yeah I, yeah, I never knew he played guitar. I know, exactly. I mean, it's the Lowry's. They're talented. They can play anything, <laughs> yeah, man. man. They're amazing. They're all in perfect shape. They are, right? <laughs> they all have right? their hair. They're like, <laughs> They've got the hair. they got everything. they got some good jeans. <laughs> the Lowry jeans. They, they're they great jeans. Yeah. They are musical, all of them. And um, so, yeah, so Corey filled in. Uh, Seven Dust was ramping back up. Mm. And Corey... I mean, it fit, you know, it just, it kind of made sense. You and know? you guys are like a three piece though. So in, we were okay. off and on, off you know, on. we had guitar players. We'd always revert back to being a three piece, Dale, Sean and myself. And, uh, but Corey is a great fit, man. That's he, awesome. Man. He's amazingly talented. And with this album, he not only plays guitar and he sings backgrounds, but you know, oh, okay. yeah, he, he was, you know, engineered, assistant engineer on it. Oh he, yeah. He helped me get my shit together for the album. Where'd you guys record it? We recorded the drums at Blackbird. Okay. And then we did all the overdubs at a studio in Nashville called Dark Horse. Okay. So I was wondering if you guys did any work with Corey at his studio. No. Um, at his home studio, he, to help me kind of get ready for the track, Sean had sent out the demos. Hmm. And he had kind of laid out a guide uh, with sort of a drum machine to kind of give us an idea of the arrangement and how the song He sends parts. that to you? He like, sends that to all of us. Okay. So Corey, to help me get ready, it would mix it in a studio. He would take the drum machine out and send mm. me the tracks so that I could get into my music oh, room and cool. just kind of shred through the songs and, and figure out what I was going to do when I got into so the So Sean is kind of like the leader 
of Seether, right? Is Absolutely, kind of, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's sort of, uh, it's his vision, right. it is. You know, we're a band, he's really, I've been with the band 17 years, and he, wow. he's been very gracious about allowing me to kind of put my stamp on it, let me do my thing, you know. But for the most part, man, yeah, the vision and the music really comes from Sean. Um, I, I like when you were talking, this this album oh, right yeah. here, you you weren't on this record, right? No, this who, was the who first drums one. drums before this? So this was Josh Fries, um, anyone knows, incredible drummer, session drummer, who did yeah. that album. And so um, the quest began. So Sean and Dale relocated to the States from South Africa. Mm -hmm. They had Josh do the album, and they had a couple different touring guys, and they couldn't find a guy that just fit, you know? If you've ever seen like Hired Gun documentary I or love anything, that, you know? Yeah, yeah. It really is. Great documentary. There's a lot of talented guys out there, but it is about the hang, because you live on a bus, a postage stamp, size, you know, yes, you see them space all the time and you can get on each other's nerves and uh, you got to be able to to work together, the chemistry and personality. Mm -hmm. And uh, they couldn't find a guy. So they had a sound engineer who had been a good friend of mine, sound engineer for the band I'd formerly been with called the Nixons. And he suggested I audition. So that was in Dallas, Texas at the, um, the end of 03. And I auditioned, I was the last of three guys. Yeah, I was about to say, I, I've heard this, I love the story. So, and they were like, weren't they gonna make the song difficult? Like they were frustrated? Oh yeah, they were just worn out, man. What song was it? They were, it the first song I did was a song called Pride. Okay. And it's, it's a tricky song. Did you know that song Pride? A and I learned the song, I learned the whole album. I was supposed to play four songs, but I learned the whole album. Oh, that's so cool. So Sean started off with Pride. I just got right into it. And they were like, okay, okay. And then ran down. Basically we did the whole set they were doing at the time. And, uh, that was it. And two weeks later, I was on the road with them. Could you tell when you're playing? Could you see like like they're into it? You know, did yeah, you get a vibe? Yeah, yeah, I could see him. You know, Sean had his hat pulled down. He was looking at the floor. They had beer cans everywhere. They'd been drinking. There were a couple of guys who were just like, "This is going to work." They were frustrated. Mm -hmm. They weren't sure they're going to find a guy. And um, but it, you know, that's little so cool. did they know it was going to be me. But I worked. <laughs> I worked my ass off for that audition to get ready for it. Hey, you know? that's so cool. And you were in the Nixons too, right? That, that's, that's right. That's how it all began. I remember this huge song on, on the Nixons. Uh, I remember what was the single? It was I heard Sister. on the radio. Sister. Your sister. Yeah. 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 That was it. We were all from Oklahoma, and my first real band, and we were signed to MCA Records, and wow, you know, did the whole thing. It was my introduction into the business. And Sister was a top 40 hit. What year was this? Uh, uh, it was in, uh, summer of 96. So oh, cool. I joined this band in 92. And it was kind of the classic story. We're, uh, you know, touring the region yeah. and building a following. We put out our own CD with the original version of Sister. Sold 15,000 units. You know, and it was back mm -hmm. then the deal was to get a major label. So yeah. we got a major, recorded by different labels and, and got signed with MCA. <laughs> That's so cool, man. MCA is huge. It was it, it was a big deal and it was great. We toured with Kiss on the reunion tour. No way. Madison Square Garden. And you love Kiss. I love Kiss. My I, parents I, I, sat next to Paul Stanley's parents. And, no way. You know, it was Were they surreal. cool? It was very cool. Oh, yeah. that's so cool. Great, great memory. I love that you love Kiss, man. I think you sent me a collection or a picture of all your some I'm of your a, albums, some I'm, of your albums. You had like a million albums. I'm a huge fan. It was the band that kicked it off for me, and I'm a huge collector. And oh and man, I, and I, love, I, I love that. Yeah, I love. Do you band. have like a space at home where you put all your stuff? I do. Yeah. I do. I have like uh, a man cave. Coming? Yeah, I do. I have a man cave. Oh, that's and, so cool. Yeah, man. I have. Very like, similar to hear plaques up. Is your wife cool with that? She's like, you, she's very this? cool, and it just stays to the air, the upstairs, the music area of the house. And yeah. we have another room. Both my boys are musicians, and so it's oh, the music cool. room. We've got a couple of kids set up, and uh, my other son's a bass player. So you guys just um, jam. That's that, it, man. We jam. Dude, yeah. I'm so jealous of that. Like <laughs> my son starts guitar lessons next week, and I'm like, I want to jam so bad with my kids. I didn't push either one of them into it. I, yeah. it just it really happened. My oldest, uh, Jackson, he's 21. He's a drummer. He's a badass little drummer. Oh, that's cool. And he's showing me stuff. The first time no he way. got up, he got up with Seether when he was 15 in front of 10,000 people. I told him, look, you learn <laughs> Remedy, the end of Remedy, and you're going to switch off with me and do the song, Hometown Show. Oh, man. And he got up, and all my buddies were there crying and freaking out. Oh, but he got dude. up when he was 15, and he played it like he owned it, like he'd been doing it. Yeah. I, I, when I, I was 15, I would have been, you know. Yeah, man. And he just 10, got up like, Dad, people. I got this, man. I got this. Did you, do you have it on YouTube or anything? Like, is it uh, I do. I have it up on YouTube. Yeah, a little oh, I'd clip love to see that, yeah. dude. Yeah. 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 I was <laughs> so, freaking out, and my friends, and it was an amazing moment. Well, um, growing up, when did you start playing drums? Was that, oh, do you have a musical family background kind of thing? Not really, actually. Um, 
I was 13, and my brother is also a musician, and we were just kind of the freaks of the family. What's your kinda, brother play? He's a bass player. So oh, cool. again, so the Humphrey Rhythm jam. section, my <laughs> boys, and our, I don't know what it is about bass and drums, but <laughs> that's how it happens. Were you guys but, ever in a band together? We never played together, really? no. no and did he ever go off and play in So bands? he's in Nashville, he does session work. Oh, and, that's cool. Yeah, he plays, and um, we're, you know, we always text and message each other because we're huge music fans. You yeah. Know, and, is he a Kiss fan too? Kiss fan and everything. Van Halen, obviously with Eddie's passing. We talk so much lately. Is he your know? older brother, you said? Are He's you? my younger brother. Are you the oldest? I'm the oldest, yeah. So like I have an older brother and I was always listening to what he was listening to. Were you kind of doing that with him? Like like you should check out this Kiss. I don't know. Yeah, like and then he was, he'd find great music too. Actually, he turned me on to Van Halen. He was younger, you know, he would have mm. been seven or eight. <laughs> yeah. The first Van Halen album we had was Fair Warning and he actually got it. It was one of those deals where we could get one album a year, you know, bigger parents that go into the record store. Just one a year? One a year. Oh, that and I went bad. and got Judas Priest's point of entry. You gotta make it he, good. You and he went and got year. fair warning. Oh, no way. And we would then we'd, we'd share albums and yeah. stuff. But he would get me into music too, so yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so cool, He's a man. cool younger brother. <laughs> And, and I have this, but you weren't on this. This is before yeah. Sarin Gas. That's before Seether was Seether. That's Sarin Gas, original name of the band. Did you practice this Africa. album when you were like? There's some shows. songs. When we go back to South Africa, we've been there. Uh, I've been there five or six times with a beautiful country, oh, yeah. and their families are still there. Oh, that's so cool. And there's some songs on there that were, were really popular there uh, off this album, Fragile. So, Dude, so, that's yeah. so awesome, man. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. Man, there's so much to go over, man. Yeah, man. Okay. You did. They did the first album without you. What's that? Disclaimer two. That's with you. Right. So what happened was we were getting ready for the second album, and uh, we, they decided for us to rec to cover Broken. Broken was an acoustic yeah. song originally on Disclaimer, mm -hmm. and we covered it as a duet with Amy Lee, and that was the first thing I did with the band. Oh, okay. And that was for the Punisher soundtrack. Yes. And that thing took off. It was a hit. So they were like, you guys are going on the road. And uh, that was one thing the Nixons never got to do. We never got to tour overseas and do any of that. So ah. with Seether, the first year and a half I was in the band, we were overseas opening for Evanescence. And she'd come out, we'd do Broken every night. And uh, it was a great tour. It was the first time I had been you know, to Europe. To, so how come the Nixons never went to, to Europe? I don't know. It was yeah. just one of those deals. We played US and Canada, but never got overseas. Mm. It, it costs a lot of money to get a band overseas. Sure. And, for whatever reasons, we just never got over. Yeah, there. man, I love that song, dude. And yeah, it's cool. And that was when Sean was, they were kind of dating or yeah, something? Yeah, they were yeah. together when I first joined the band. Yeah, okay. And uh, um, one of the earliest shows I did was uh, New Year's Eve in South Africa, 2003, 2004. Mm -hmm. And she would come out and we'd do Broken oh, over that's there. So cool. and, and it was great. <laughs> and then you have, oh, what's this guy? Carmen yes. Effect. That was my first full length with the album, oh, okay. with the band. Uh, and, so you uh, had, when you were in the studio, you kind of did your own thing? Like you, you said, Sean gives you kind of freedom to... Yeah, this one was like old school. There was an old place in LA, a rehearsal spa space called Cole Studios. Mm. And I think Rage did an album there. Oh, a little really? hole in the wall rehearsal space. It's gone now. And we just got in there on a break from the tour. This is like the guys would ne never go home. We'd be on the road. We were opening <laughs> for Evanescence. We'd go to LA and do pre-production for this album. And yeah, we would just get in rehearsal space and do it old school. The guys would throw out ideas. Yeah. And I'd lay my parts down and try to figure out what we're doing. And uh, this album has Remedy on it, right? That's, that, that's right. Yeah, that was Remedy's a massive that. song, dude. Yeah. Is yeah. it hard picking a single like that? I mean, do you guys know right away, like, this, is, this should I be I think it? it was sort of obvious, you know? Yeah. Um, you just know. Yeah, I think you just kind of know. It was a special song. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was cool. That's cool. And this, I, I, I got to talk about One Cold Night. One man. Cold Night. So, Real fast, I I play drums too, which, yeah. which is cool. I look up to you. Uh, I quit playing for a couple of years, and I was supposed to play at church. They asked me to. I'm like, holy crap, I got to practice. And I grabbed this album. Oh wow! I was like, I'll just practice this. And so this album's like ingrained in me. Like I, I just I love this album. You know, Thanks, I love man. the cover song you did too. You, did, you guys did the Pearl Jam. Cover yeah, song. Immortal. Yes. Right? Yeah. How'd you guys pick that to be on there? Uh, actually, the guitar player at the time. He Pat, left after this. Yeah, album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pat and and Sean and all of us really we're big Pearl Jam fans. Yes, so I was just like, watching a live stream last night. We kicked around it, you know. We do Change, you know. Uh, I Death love tones, that Death tones, We do a lot yeah. of cool covers and. Look, you're playing Death to the Change right now. Right there. Yeah, man. I hadn't played it. I in set years. that up, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. I waited. Yeah, yeah, I'm just. We kidding. love playing that song. 
And, but yeah, anyway, uh, this is this is so cool. Do you do you um do you ever get nervous playing like something different like this? Like, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that we knew it was being recorded. You did were, you do one one night of recording, or did you do a couple? It was one night. I believe <laughs> no, it was two no shows. Oh, two yeah, shows. Okay, so gotcha. we could yeah kind of pick and choose best performances. But uh, that was in Philadelphia, the club there, venue there, and in Philadelphia. Yeah. And you guys filmed that too, right? That, we did. We yeah, filmed yeah, yeah. it. It was a DVD. Is it on vinyl yet? This is not vinyl. It's, Everybody says it's not. And we're re-releasing some some of the older stuff, and I hope eventually it does come out on. Man, vinyl. I love it, man. Yeah, I I, I just yeah, I, I practice this album constantly, dude. It was so <laughs> That's cool. awesome. Nice uh, album cover. Yes. Yeah. 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 The, the, you got that? Tell me, think by Yeah, Finding yeah. Beauty. Yeah. Finding Beauty and Negative Spaces. When was this recorded, by the way? This is yeah. This is like uh, that's Howard Benson produced that one, and that was, um, gosh, that would be two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and this is when, like you said, you were hanging out with like the Seven Dust guys back then, right? You, it, was this around that time? Yeah, actually, this was uh, for the tour of for Carmen Effect before it was Dark New Day. Oh, and that's yeah, really yeah, when yeah, I yeah, uh, was the first Clint. time I met Corey, and then you know really sort of rekindled a uh, relationship with Clint, you know, obviously yeah. Clint, Corey, Clint and Corey playing together because the Nixons had taken out Seven Dust way early on. Yeah. We had, uh, the Nixons had toured a festival called the Roar Tour and I went to the side stage one day and it was freaking Seven Dust just killing it, you know, mm. and I'm like, they're a hard this, band to follow. Right? They're a hard band to follow, <laughs> man. And they handed us our butts, every, you know, every night, man. They were great. They were oh yeah, killer. yeah, man. Oh, that's so cool, man. Uh, I love like when they're doing stuff with like Rise uh, Records. Is that what's called Rise Records? Yeah. Rise, yeah. Rise. That'd be cool if you guys worked with like Elvis or something on board. With some see there, man. He's <laughs> right? he's the popular guy right now. Dude. Yeah, Elvis. Yeah, Elvis. I forget. Yeah, uh, this album right here. You got the country. This is the this country, is country song. Country song, right? Holding on, holding on to strings. Better left to fray. Yeah, this, the yeah. picture is blurry. This was our first album with Brendan O'Brien, man. He was Brendan O'Brien, dude. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a legend, he was man. Killer. I was so nervous. How do you pick him? In. Did you? Did the record company? It was a mutual you? thing, and I remember Sean sending me a message. It was Christmas, and he was like, "I got a present." You know, just had a meeting with Brendan, oh. and he he was awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, you dude. know, great stories. And when I met him, my first comment to him: I'm a huge fan of. Uh, King's X, King's the X, band, yeah, King's yeah, X, and yeah. the band, the album Dog Man. Oh yeah, it's a killer album. I he go, did that album. That's my favorite album you ever really? did. To Brendan, I told him that. He's like, "What are you serious? You know? Why didn't King's X ever like? I don't know. Explode, man. I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's so cool, man. Country song too. That that was that was wild hearing that, man. That cool. was a cool song. Um, Troy came up with the kind of guitar riff country thing intro. Yeah. And then Sean had kind of put the the back end of it together. I remember him showing it to the band. Like, this is different for us, man. Mm -hmm. What do you think? And I'm like, I think this is great. I mean, this sounds great. We got to really work on this, you know, put mm -hmm. it together. So we worked in a studio in Nashville doing pre production, going back and forth. And then Brendan came in, and um, like I said, it was our first album with him. And oh, that's so cool, man. And you're like, we'll just call it Country Song. It's Country Song. <laughs> call it Country Song. That was right? it. A lot of working titles end up being yeah. finished deal. I wonder if, like, you guys ever do, like, a country album. <laughs> right? <laughs> That'd be cool, man. I don't know. <laughs> that, that's silly. But yeah, man. And then we got this guy. Isolate and Medicaid. Yeah, and, and it is a vinyl, which is sweet. It is, yeah. yeah. It was our first one on vinyl. It's and cool our second album vinyl, with man. Brendan. Worked with Brendan again. Interesting artwork. Yeah, guitar player um, Brian did the artwork for that oh, album. Oh, did he? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. How do you guys decide on album cover, like album artwork and all that? Does is it like get voted on and everything? Or is this a big? We talk about it as a band, and, yeah. and Sean will usually kind of have a final sort, sort of say, but I think he, he spoke to Brian about like what I kind of envisioned the art yeah. to be. You can kind of see the shadow of the gun there. And stuff oh, that you kinda, I never you noticed that. You don't see when you look at it the first time. Ah, I never noticed that, man. It's kind of cool. This looks like, you know, like Kurt Cobain does artwork or used yeah. to? This yeah. kind of reminds me of something like Kurt right. Cobain-ish. Right, very yeah. much that vibe. I don't know. know, but, oh, that's so cool. I love your name, Seether, by the way, and you got your name Thanks. from the- The Veruca Salt song. I used to love that first Veruca Salt yeah, album, man. man. Can't fight the seether. Yes. Did it. you like them back in the day? Yeah, Bruca Salt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. She used to date like Dave Grohl back in the day. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, anyway. I, I love the band name Seether. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how'd you guys decide Dangerous is going to be your single, man, on this new record? Man, it really it's was so catchy. Tough. Okay, so we did, we tracked 21 songs for this album. Really? <laughs> Sean sent out, he was prolific while we were off, man. He wrote a ton of stuff. Yeah. He sent me demos. And I, I was working my ass off on these songs. And initially it was just 15. 
And he called me the night before I was fly to, to fly to Nashville and go, look, uh, we're going to do 21 songs and you're doing them in four days. <laughs> you'll, get, you'll get it done, man. <laughs> Seven songs a day, I had to track drums. But uh, I did my homework for it. But uh, That's a lot this of album is solid all the way through. And Sean produced this one. Oh, he did. And, and I track drums to the demo so he can sit in the control room and act as producer and listen to me play. And That's like, cool. hey he man, produces. change this, don't do that. That sucks or whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 21 and songs. That's insane. Dude. It was a, it was 21 How, songs. Where are the rest of the songs coming out? So I don't out? know. They're yeah, they're in the can. They're finished. Everything's Do you, finished. It, it, yeah, that'd Maybe be awesome. Maybe they'll come out someday. I don't know. We might move on to newer stuff. It's it's hard to say, but we definitely I think we picked the best. Did, were you ever thinking about doing like a double album or anything or is that Yeah, absolutely. Cuz you know when people say idea. that it doesn't work, think Smashing Pumpkins did, man. Yeah, that was Smashing that Pumpkins huge, did. man. Melancholy. Yeah. And yeah. And as the way it turned out with 13 songs so that it sounds good, it's a double vinyl anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's three sides and then the last side is like an etching. Oh, but uh cool. Yeah, it sounds cool. It's a lot of a lot of music, a lot of great songs on there. And uh, I think Dangerous was a great first track. Yes. Yeah. And it's uh, you know, knock on wood. I love, on. I love that first song on there, man. It is like you guys have a way of like doing heavy music and melodic, and it's just perfect. Right. It's like the perfect blend, you know. Yeah. I feel like you guys could tour with anybody. You know, it could be like a Slipknot, or it could be, I don't know, Tremonti or something. It's like it's because it's heavy and melodic. <laughs> that's I don't it, know. man. Cool. That's it. You like good vocals and melody yeah. with with the heavy, you know, the hard you yeah. know, the riffs and you know and. Um, it's that's a mix we like, you mm -hmm. know, and it's a melodic it, side. And there's depth to his lyrics, man. He's got something to say. There's something there. So he writes not, all the lyrics. He does, yeah. Okay, Sean you guys don't write lyrics. lyrics, yeah. Uh, oh man, that's cool. And then you have, man, you you stay so busy. And look at all this stuff I got, dude. <laughs> you got the Nixons. So Can, yeah, this is interesting. It's, it's like an EP, right? Right. Uh, that became a full length. So the Nixons broke up in like 2000. Uh, Were you with them in 2000? I was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was with them from 92 to 2000. And uh, it was sort of those one of those stories, man. We had a record deal, lost a record deal, and, you know, trials mm -hmm. and tribulations of being in a rock and roll band. Mm. Anyway, I joined Seether, and um, for years we had fans. We, we had such a fan base there in Oklahoma and Texas and the Southwest there. Yeah. And finally, you know, the, the stars aligned so that we could do some reunion shows in 2017. Went back to Trees in Dallas and sold out. And it was great, you know. It was really fun to do those old songs again. And we had always kind of kept in touch. And guys would come out to, if I, you know, one of the guys lives in Nashville, so we'd see the wrong tour, he'd come out to the show or whatever. Oh, that's cool. But yeah, we did these reunion shows, which led to new music, which, you know, led to this. Yes. So um, the Seether's, you know, fish, finishing up an album. We were finishing up this EP that, that's also just come out. All before COVID? Like All this, before COVID, yeah, yeah. It's like you worked like crazy. Like it's almost like you knew. Like, listen, I got to get all this out now. Yeah, it was crazy. It was perfect. Yeah. And I was talking about my son earlier. Now he'll fill in for me when the Nixons. They'll do shows, mm -hmm. you know, here and there. And your son will play drums their, for him. He'll he'll play drums for the Nixons. Yeah, he'll fill oh, in for so me. Cool. He's a killer drummer. He did a tour with them last December. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And. Um, That'd be cool. Yeah. If, would you ever do a double like duty like the see there? Did I say double duty? That sounds, yeah. like, that sounds funny. Uh, it's funny. I've been double, asked like you know, uh, uh, yeah, the Nixon's tour. You know, the Nixon's opening. With, that would be interesting. Yeah, yeah, I'd be. Could you do? Man, that would be a lot of work though, right? Be a you lot could, of work. You can do man. it though. Yeah. Yeah, but I need to lose weight. So. Oh, me not? too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, me too, for sure. Ben. Uh, so, you guys, what do you? What's the next thing going to do next? What, what? Have you guys ever do a live stream or something, or some kind of? We're talking about doing one in December. Cool. Yeah, yeah, we need to do one for sure. That would yeah, be man. great. Yeah, and I miss playing. And man. then after just... COVID goes away, you guys go to Europe because right? You guys never go to Europe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, Seether will be firing up too. Oh yeah. So you know, um, trying to figure out the schedule, but again, Jackson will fill in, which is kind of oh, cool. That is so so cool, man. Cool, dude. Well. What's the next single gonna be? Can you guys tell, talk about that? New album? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, what is the next single going to be? I don't know that we've we've completely decided. It's an yet. interesting video for Dangerous. Did, yeah. You guys, uh, what, what, how'd you guys decide to do that? It's like a, it's like a, what is it? It's like a, it's not a you guys playing. It's like a something's going yeah, on. Yeah, an I animated thing. Animated. I can't yeah, think of the word. Yeah, <laughs> it, it sort of is a result of you know we can't 
you know, we'll finally see they did a live stream, so I can't say we couldn't be in a room together, but at the time we couldn't figure out how to do a video. So yeah. the easiest thing was to figure out doing an animated thing. Animated, yeah, yeah. So Sean found an artist to work with and, and put that together for Dangerous. So. That's cool, man. Are you, are you guys gonna do like lyric videos? That's been so popular now on YouTube. Yeah, you tend to do that, right? They'll, you know, put together a lyric video before the actual video will come out. I never thought I would like lyrical videos, but I do now, man. I don't, yeah. I, just, I didn't know he said that. I, I think it's cool. Yeah. They should go back and do all old stuff and right, yeah. right, because even my favorite stuff, I don't know, like, know the words. I'll be surprised. I'll see, like, Could you imagine, you know, like, Deptones words. doing a lyric video? For right, you might be like, oh, <laughs> like, wow, what is, he is that what he was saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never understand Gino, but I love Gino, though, so it's, it's cool. Oh, yeah. It's cool that you guys pick Change. Not yeah, so man, it's a cool song to do. You guys Deftone fans? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like Big me and my buddy Carl, we grew up on that, man. That, oh, it's yeah. amazing. So what's next, man? What's next for Seether? What, what are you guys going on now? Is yeah, so... Just um, waiting. Yeah, waiting for <laughs> waiting the world to ramp life. back up. So we'll do another single, absolutely. Yeah. That, yeah. And, um, you know... <laughs> Release more songs? Because you got the 21 tracks. How do you how do you decide 13 songs out of 21? It's 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 hard, man. It was really? management Does everybody get a vote? Yeah. yeah, everybody got a vote and kind of weighed out you know, what was going to work. Did you get disappointed? Like we were like, I, I did. There was a couple of things that got left off, but I think we, we picked the best of the best. And, okay. and maybe the other, you know, seven will see the light of day at some point. Do, do you guys still put music out to like movies and stuff? Like like The Punisher or, the, yeah. Do yeah, you, we haven't done a song for a soundtrack in a while, but that yeah. would be, yeah, that would be cool. You got extra ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, man, this has been awesome. Yeah, thanks for it's having really me, It's really cool. I'm really glad that uh, Corey called me up and kind of helped uh, hook this all up, man. Yeah. Corey's, Corey's the man, great. and he's great. it must be awesome working with him. He was like, you're going to hit it off with Scott, man. He's like music fan, and yes. you guys, you know, drummer, and you know, <laughs> you guys will hit it off. He's great. Dude, well, man, you're the man, dude. I, I, you sent me pictures. I'm like, why can't I have neighbors like John Humphrey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome, dude. You probably would get annoyed by me, but I would no, be like, you probably get annoyed with me, all the man? drums, the boys upstairs, and the noise. Actually, we have pretty cool neighbors where we live. Oh, do there's music going on all the so time. So the thing about music is like my kids see music all the time. It's almost I say it's like furniture to them because like if their friends come over, they're like, "Oh my God, it's a drum set!" And then I'm like, my kids see it, and they're like, "Where's the iPad?" You know, because like, yeah. they see yeah. it all the time. It's right? Like, I'm sure, you don't want to play? It's just kind of <laughs> funny, man. But yeah, they're they're taking uh, piano lessons now. That's that's how you Did start. Did your kids man. take piano lessons? I had to. I didn't have my kids take them. Yeah. Maybe could have actually my my oldest is in college for music you know he's mm -hmm. majoring in, in performance and he had a keyboard class and i my mom gave me the original piano that i had that i learned on oh cool and it was actually a really nice Baldwin piano and i have it we had to tune it and get it all ready again but i started out on piano oh that's cool man i so always wish my, i did that me and my brother were these you know weird musician kids man didn't yeah. know what to do with us and so my <laughs> mom's like you're gonna take piano and i hated it but it was gl i'm glad because it was like gave me the theory to kind of yes. understand music and the foundation for that it. would be cool your next like acoustic you just bust out this little keyboard do like <laughs> a nine like, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know and i do chopsticks <laughs> yeah, that's awesome that's awesome yeah, that's just... good man john man i appreciate being on the show bro yeah, man, this has been awesome man. Me. thank I you appreciate it i had the ending music in my head you know the very end the guitar <laughs>